How are you going to balance applying for university, writing your UCAS application, potential interviews, learning new content, and let's not forget, you're all turning 18 this year, there's gonna be a lot of 18th birthday parties. In this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly how you can manage, and not only manage, but succeed with three key strategies. So keep following, and I'm gonna show you these strategies that will help you to be calmer, more confident, and more successful in year 13. Hi everyone, and welcome to Miss Estrick Biology. If you are new here, then I'm Miss Estrick, and I've been teaching for over 10 years, and I'm here to help you to get to grips with those most challenging topics in biology, improve your study skills techniques, and to help you get the grades that you deserve. So let's face those challenges face on now. Are you currently trying to write your personal statement and currently having to think of which universities to apply for, writing your admin section of the UCAS application? Are you thinking, how am I gonna get those predicted grades that I've been given, which are very generous and aspirational, and I'm now relying on to get into university? Well, if so, grab yourself a pen and paper or a hot drink and chill and listen to these top tips, which will definitely help you to reach those goals. So strategy number one is all around time management. Now, the best way to succeed in year 13 is to be organized. Now, I know I am naturally obsessively organized, so uh, this bit comes naturally to me and I know it doesn't come naturally to some people, so I'm gonna break it down into the best ways that you can manage your organization. I'm gonna break it down into ways that you can be more organized, but hopefully in a more manageable way for people that organization doesn't necessarily come naturally to. So my first big suggestion is to do future you a huge favor and use the summer to write your personal statement and get your UCAS application pretty much sorted so you can have it ready and sent off within the first few weeks of September. Now, yes, that does take a bit of get up and go and drive to do that in the summer. But if you do need more help, then check out my video, which I'll link up here and you can have a look at how to write personal statements. But if you can get that big job ticked off, then when you start back at school or college in September, it will be so much more manageable. You'll be more relaxed and you can just focus on your A-levels. And then as it gets nearer the time of potential interviews or entrance exams like BMAT, you have much less to focus on and it will be all more manageable. Now, the second thing is using a work timetable. No, do not turn off. Do not get off this video. I know some of you hate the word timetable when it comes to revision or work, but bear with me on this one. It's more of a schedule, I should say, a schedule to follow rather than a timetable as such. You don't need to timetable out every hour of your life for the next year. But what I do suggest is when you're given your lesson timetable at the start of the year, have a look when do you have your lessons, when do you have your study periods. Oh, and uh, we've got a little visitor. Here's B. apparently she loves a timetable and had to come in and help at this point. Uh, so where were we? When you get your timetable at the start of the year, have a look where your lessons versus study periods are. Also, if you know you've got a part-time job or if you have any extracurricular activities that you do in school, out of school, have a look at those and add it to your timetable. What you're then left with is your study periods, the evenings and times at the weekend where there are free slots that you could do work. Now that doesn't mean you have to work in every free slot, absolutely not, you do need to have a rest. But if you can have a look at where your free slots are, you can pick out some of those free slots that every week you will use for work. And if you use them every week for work, it will become a habit it will become a routine. And if you do anything in a routine for three weeks, it becomes a really easy habit to follow. So if you know that you are really effective in the morning, have a look at where your morning study periods are and then set those aside and you'll just call it homework or consolidation time. Or it might be the afternoon or the evenings. Whenever you are most efficient, those free times set aside that every week you will use those for work. Now, as I said in the intro, you will have a lot of 18th birthday parties this year and you don't wanna be missing those. However, you don't want them to be impacting your A-levels either. So the way that you can make sure that you can still do well in your A-levels and enjoy yourself is to have a schedule like this because then when you know you've got a birthday party coming up that Friday and or Saturday, 
if you were going to dedicate some time on Saturdays to work, you know that that week you're not going to be working on Saturday because you're going to a party on Friday night. So instead, that time you need to make up for it at some other point during the week when normally you've said that is just your usual chill time, free time. So it's about looking ahead and balancing to get a work-life balance. Number two is how to manage the more challenging content. And students often say that the jump from year 12 to year 13 is actually harder than the jump from 11 to 12 when you started your A-levels. And there's a few reasons for that. Number one is you are managing and balancing more work because you've got UCAS interviews um, as well as all your A-levels. So that's one reason it's harder. The second reason it's harder is it's higher stakes. You're getting closer and closer to your A-levels, so it does feel harder. And finally, the third reason and the main reason, the content is harder in year 13. More challenging topics do come up in year 13 and the exam questions are harder. The exam skills are more difficult as well. So all of that together, it does feel like a harder year, particularly the first half of year 13. But I'm going to show you steps that you can put in place to make this manageable. The first thing that you should do is to review year 12 topics that feed into year 13 topics. So for example, photosynthesis and respiration, you will need to know about ATP, the structure of a chloroplast, the structure of mitochondria. And that comes up in the structure of cells and in biological molecules. So revise those topics before you then learn photosynthesis and respiration. Now you might be thinking, how am I meant to know which topics to revise in advance and how am I meant to know exactly which topics I'm going to be doing first? And that is why I've actually created a free masterclass. So to help you with just that, I'm going to be running a year 12 into year 13 masterclass in August. It will be on Tuesday the 16th of August at 1pm, completely free, and I'm going to be going through year 12 topics that are essential to remember, an introduction to some of the year 13 topics, and some top tips on the challenging exam techniques. So if you are in year 12 now, going into year 13, this is an absolute must for all biologists. It's completely free and there is no limit on the number of people that can come. So share this with your friends and if you do want to come, then I'll put the sign up link in the description. It also comes with a free workbook, so definitely come along to it. And the next thing is thinking about how you can improve your memory to cope with this more challenging content, but also remember all of the year 12 content as well. And the key is active recall. And if you aren't new here, you would have heard me say this so many times. Active recall is scientifically proven to improve your long-term memory. So that is what you should be doing, frequently testing yourself, not just reading content and passively taking it in. You need to test yourself and see, do you remember it? And if you're not sure how to do that, then give my Active Recall workbook a go. And I'll show you it just here. So I've created for all of the theory, lots of different types of short answer questions to actively test your knowledge. You could also use flashcards as well if you find that helpful. And the other key thing is, yes, use my Active Recall booklet to consolidate and test your current topics, but interleave revision is the best way to remember your year 12 content at the same time as year 13. So what I would recommend is 20 minutes a week minimum, have time set aside that that is when you're going to do questions from my Active Recall workbook or use your flashcards from year 12 topics. So if you haven't already got my Active Recall workbook, that's how you could use the year 12 section. You could be interleaving that while you're learning the year 13. And if you do already have it, you can download it multiple times. So re-download it and use the year 12 section as this interleaved revision section. Now my third and final strategy is looking after your mental health and well-being. This is so important and must not be overlooked. Year 13 is a more challenging year and it is higher stakes and it can be a lot more emotional and people do find it difficult at different points in the year everyone will find it hard at some point. One big reason for that could be is most people receive at least one rejection, if not many rejections from universities. And after you've put all of that hard work into your personal statement, your UCAS application, it is really difficult to then get that rejection. Especially if what you perceive is everyone around you getting lots of offers and you might feel like you're the only one. Now that isn't the case. For example, this year, 
only 16% of people that applied for medicine actually got an offer. And that is just because, sadly, there are still people from 2020, 2021, who have deferred entry and they've already got their grades. So the universities will prioritise people with grades over people that don't have grades. Sometimes, not all the time. But also, it's even more competitive now. So you will get rejections, but that doesn't mean everyone will reject you. You'll also have many class tests and you won't do well in every test. That is a normal part of learning. You have to fail to learn and that is normal. It will happen, but it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt when it happens and it makes you feel rubbish. These are the sorts of things that can make year 13 really difficult to manage. And that is why it is so essential to look after your mental health and well-being this year. What I want you to actively do is have self check-ins with yourself every week. And this is what I mean by that. Find a time each week where you can quietly sit somewhere alone and reflect on that week. And I don't want you to reflect on what has gone badly, what has been a failure, no. We are having these check-ins to be kind to yourself and to be positive because you need to keep reminding yourself of all the things that you have actually done well. And that's the point of these check-ins. So once a week, I want you to find somewhere quiet, pen and paper, and you are going to list all of your achievements that week. Even if they were only small, I want a positive achievements list. And having that on paper in front of you should help to boost your mental health and well-being and balance out any negative feelings that you've been having about yourself. So it's really, really important to have those sorts of check-ins and to be kind to yourself. Now, if you do still find that you are struggling a lot, then please don't feel embarrassed or ashamed about that because that does happen to people. And the best thing to do is to talk to people. Don't bottle it up. You need to make sure that you do talk to a trusted friend, a trusted family member, teachers as well, and confiding them with what you're finding difficult and letting them know what help you need. Or if you don't know what help you need, just asking for help. And that will be the first step towards feeling better about a more challenging situation. So that is it. Those are my three key strategies to help you to make sure that your year 13 is more manageable and successful. Now, if you do have A's and A star predictions and you really need to get those to get into university, then I highly recommend that you watch this video here. This is my video on how to get an A star in A-level biology. So that's a must watch because I talk you through exactly what to do to get those A stars. But that's it for now. Hope you found it helpful. If you have, please give this video a thumbs up and make sure that you sign up to that free masterclass.